A Singaporean businessman who has just been served with a foreign interference notice says that he will submit his representations to the government next week. As speaking to CNA in a phone call, Mr. Chan Man Ping Philip says that he will deal with authorities directly. He's the first individual that Singapore is looking to designate as a politically significant person or designated PSP under its foreign interference law. Lauren Ong with this report. A prominent businessman in the property sector and an active member of local grassroots organizations, Mr. Chan Manping Philip will now also be the first individual to be served a notice under Singapore's foreign interference law. In a statement, the Home Affairs Ministry says Mr. Chan has shown to be susceptible to influence by foreign actors and willing to advance their interests. They've assessed his activities to be directed towards a political end in Singapore, grounds for designating an individual as a PSP. He's been given two weeks to submit representations to the authorities. If he is designated, he can appeal against the decision. Mr. Chan was not present when CNA visited one of his offices earlier, but in a phone call, he said that he will be submitting his representations next week. He also stressed that he prefers not to deal with this matter through the media and that he has full trust and faith in the Singapore government. The Home Affairs Ministry says it's in the public interest for countermeasures under FIGA to be applied to Mr. Chan. As a designated PSP, Mr. Chan could be required to declare political donations of $10,000 or more, foreign affiliations and migration benefits. These have to be disclosed yearly. Mr. Chan immigrated from Hong Kong to Singapore more than three decades ago. The 59-year-old naturalized Singaporean is a prominent businessman in the property sector and managing director of four property companies. He's also the president of the Hong Kong Singapore Business Association and the Kowloon Club. He's also active in local grassroots organizations, including taking on leadership roles at Kampong Chai Chi's Citizens Consultative Committee and Bukit Timah Community Club Management Committee. The People's Association tells CNA that Mr. Chan has stepped down from all grassroots appointments. Mr. Chan is known to be a regular contributor to local Chinese newspaper Lian He Zhao Bao and has been featured by media outlets in mainland China. He gave an interview to Chinese headline New Media in March 2023, ahead of attending China's two sessions as one of the overseas Chinese representatives. In the article, he was quoted as calling for overseas Chinese from all walks of life to form an alliance and organize an annual summit in China or abroad with the help of various overseas Chinese affairs offices. That's to contribute towards advocating for China. The Overseas Chinese Affairs Office is an external name for United Front, a department of Chinese Communist Party's Central Committee. Now, if designated as a politically significant person, Mr. Chan will be the first individual designated under the Foreign Interference Countermeasures Act. Two non-governmental organizations were previously designated as politically significant when the law first kicked in last December. Let's take a closer look at the law. Now, the law was passed in Parliament in 2021. It gives authorities more powers to prevent, detect and disrupt foreign interference in domestic politics. Uh, firstly, individuals can be deemed as designated politically significant persons or designated PSP if their activities are directed towards a political end in Singapore. They will have to report single donations of $10,000 or more amounting to $10,000 over a specific period. Uh, they would also have to disclose foreign affiliations. According to Article 76, uh, this means reporting every time that they meet such affiliates during a relevant period. Uh, these designated PSPs could also be subject to a wider range of measures if authorities deem necessary. Uh, this includes being prohibited from affiliating with certain foreign principles and having a second bank account to receive political donations. Uh, to help us through 
the legal issues around this story. We have with us in the studio Associate Professor Eugene Tan. He's from SMU's School of Law. And thanks for coming in to join us this Thank evening, uh, uh, Professor Tan. What must happen under FICA for an individual to be called out as a PSP? Well, in FICA, you have two types of PSP, um, you know, and the first is a defined PSP. So these are your political office holders, your MPs, your central executive committee members of political parties. What we're concerned with uh, tonight is really the designated uh, PSPs. So these are individuals or organisations, uh, in particular in this case, individuals, you know, who are, who is a member uh, of a foreign legislature or a foreign political organisation. Or, you know, they have engaged in activities, you know, which are directed towards a political end in Singapore. Uh, and that means, you know, activities that could ha have an, uh, an impact on our national sovereignty or security. So, and the second requirement under the law is that there must be a public interest uh, in, in applying measures, you know, to deal with um, the activities of the politically significant persons. Uh, so these two requirements in many ways ensure that uh, there is a basis for someone to be designated a, a PSP. You know, so it's not just enough to engage in activities that could be detri detrimental to Singapore, but also you know, that there is that public interest in, in, in applying countermeasures. Mm. Professor Tan, let's look a little bit more closely at that, because in Mr Chan's case, he has said that he's going to make those submissions directly. He's going to deal directly with the government. But uh, what we do know is that there was this call, supposedly, for an alliance of overseas Chinese. Now, can Mr. Chan argue uh, that this was just his personal opinion as an example, especially when the ministry had found that he was, quote, you know, willing to advance the interests of foreign actors? Yes, I, I think, you know, it is possible for him to make an, such an argument. Um, you know, I think he, he will have to in his representations, you know, to the Registrar of Foreign and Political Disclosure at the Ministry of Foreign, uh, Home Affairs, you know, he will have to show that he's actually not susceptible to, to influence by foreign actors uh, and that he has not or will not advance foreign interests. But I think we only have that one piece of evidence. Uh, I think it is probably fair to say that for operational reasons, uh, the Ministry of Home Affairs have not release uh, other sensitive uh, information, you know, that could perhaps reveal how they go about making these sort of assessments, you know, who, who may have been providing them with information. So the registrar would have made very careful considerations, uh, but he, the law provides, uh, you know, for someone who is about to be designated a PSP, you know, to make representations, you know, to, to clarify, to challenge, to rebut, you know, whatever evidence um, you know, the, that he thinks, you know, the registrar has. In this instance, uh, this gentleman may have been able to rally some support. Does this matter in terms of uh, is it immaterial under FICA, whether or not he, his cause is one that finds wide support? I think under FICA, that is not a, a relevant consideration. Uh, I, I think it's, we could talk about the power of one, um, you know, by this person's, you know, measure of influence, you know, in different organisations and in, in different strata of society, um, you know, that he would be able to perhaps further the agenda of uh, a foreign entity or foreign principle. Um, so I think it's, it's, it's important that there is this preemptive uh, measure within the law, right? Because if we wait until uh, for evidence, you know, to suggest that, that there has been a, a ripple effect, uh, then I think it would be too late. So he has been notified of this potential designation. Tell us what the process is going to be like for Mr Chan going forward now, uh, Prof Tan, as he submits his representations. He's got a couple of weeks to do this. Uh, we don't know if he will appeal. He may, he may do so. Uh, what happens? How and when would such a person become designated you know, sort of uh, a politically significant person. Correct. So, so today's announcement, um, you know, the Ministry of Home Affairs has indicated that, that they do intend uh, to designate, um, you know, Mr Chan as a designated uh, politically significant person. So under FICA, you know, he has 14 days 
to make representations, you know, to the registrar of uh, political and foreign, uh, foreign and political disclosures. Uh, essentially, what he's trying to do, you know, is to is to make a case, you know, that the registrar may have come to the wrong assessment, you know, that perhaps whatever evidence, which he probably wouldn't know what evidence the, the registrar has, you know, it cannot be relied upon. Um, so the threshold, in a way, can be very demanding for someone who is about to be designated. And, and if the registrar proceeds, you know, to designate, um, you know, the, the individual, meaning his representations were not successful, uh, then the designated PSP can choose to appeal uh, to the Minister uh, for Home Affairs. So, Prof. Tan, just to clarify, would these representations be made by himself? Would a lawyer be involved at all? I, I don't think the law st states whether someone can, can or cannot use a uh, a lawyer, I, and I think that you know that there would be no harm in, in him uh, engaging a lawyer. But the issue is not so much legal. Right? The issue really is, you know, whether whether he is susceptible to to um, influence by a foreign actor, you know, and whether you know he has you know demonstrated that willingness to advance uh, the, the the interest of the foreign actor. So you know, I'm not sure a lawyer would would be helpful. A lawyer could perhaps you know try to whatever Mr. Chan wants to present to the registrar, you know, in a coherent manner, um, you know, but I, I think he will have to somehow rebut the evidence that right. the registrar has. Right, might, it may have to come from him. Mm. All right, uh, Dawn was laying out some of the possible uh, prohibitions that might face him should he be designated a PSP, and that include not having a second bank account to get foreign donations, and not being able to affiliate with cer certain foreign principles. Uh, I take it there are more restrictions than that should authorities deem them necessary. Yes. So the, the, the FICA provides for step-up countermeasures if necessary. So, so when, once he's designated as a PSP, he will have to make certain disclosures, right? As was, um, you know, whether they relate to foreign donations, uh, whether he has migration benefits like permanent residency or foreign citizenship. And based on this information, right, the registrar can then determine whether step-up measures Unnecessary, you know. So he now has that legal responsibility of making a truthful uh, declaration of all these information if he's designated as a PSP. With the attention, or at least some of the attention, on this case right now, uh, Prof Tan, how far does this episode, in effect, actually help people to understand how FICA is applied? Don, I think it does help in some way, right? But I think we should recognise that there are operational reasons, you know, which which would prevent. Uh, sensitive information from being put out in the public domain. Uh, but I think it's important to recognise that, uh, you know, Mr Chan can continue to engage in his trade, his profession. You know, he can go about his daily activities, you know, subject to whatever countermeasures that he, he would have to, uh, to uh, comply with. You know, but he, he is not a criminal. He has not committed any offence. Um, you know, so I, I think it, what it does really under this law is to provide that label, to put people on notice, right, that a, a designated PSP, you know, could be representing the interests of a foreign entity. And so people will then have to make the assessment, you know, as to how much weight they want to put to certain representations that might come from a designated PSP, you know. So I think it, it, it seeks to ensure you know, that Singapore politics remain, you know, the sole preserve of Singaporeans and, and not that of foreign entities. Oh, thanks for coming in again this evening to uh, guide us through the legal minutiae of this uh, Thank you. story. Uh, Associate Professor Eugene Tan from SMU.